This morning we have Sarah Derwin with us from the Marquette County Health Department. You're the health educator there and uh, we wanted to bring you in to talk a little bit about this month as it is Suicide Awareness Month. Um, certainly a big opportunity to share resources and uh, prevention tips and tools. Um, but before we go there, it seems like there's been an increased emphasis, especially over the last three years, five years, especially here in the Upper Peninsula, regarding suicide and connecting families with those resources. As a whole, is it getting better as far as people being aware of the programs and the resources? You know, I think we're getting we're getting awareness out there more. We're getting the idea of what prevention is and training and, you know, trying to help people um, think about it, um, what they can do in their own world and their own, on their own level. So um, I think we're doing a really good job. We collaborate with a lot of community partners who also get the word out there too, which really helps. Yeah, and I've, I've seen a lot more people share their stories, share their struggles, and it's become uh, maybe an easier space to do that just um, as a whole we've provided a space for that has that helped as well are you finding people I, I, it's still a very hard topic to talk about it can be uncomfortable um, but is it is there is there a more open space for for people I think there is you know something that families that have experienced a loss will tell us is that they could feel very isolated and the stigma that could be there feeling like their community might reject them or judge them and we really have created a space I think where people feel a little bit more um, okay to share their story to connect with other people and to kind of realize the positive impact that that can make so yeah. even going through a loss um, that there can be some meaning there by sharing yeah, and you know, um, for somebody who maybe knows someone who is struggling or they're seeing some of those signs and symptoms, do you have kind of uh, a bit of advice for them at how to approach that person or that situation? We always tell folks to, you know, ask a lot of questions, to really be there for somebody. Um, you don't have to be a mental health professional to be a caring person in someone's life. And a lot of times people will say, I just wanted someone to listen to me. Mm. So we know that anybody can do that. We can all be good listeners. And then really that connect to resources. So kind of like, what is that next step? For some people, it might just be talking. For other folks, it might be connecting with like a mental health resource. Um, for some folks, it might be talking to somebody on 988. Um, so there's kind of a variety of different paths you can take, but that very first step of noticing and asking is huge. And of course, we can always do better getting more providers, more resources. You know, we hear about shortages. I know there's a lot of work being done to, uh, you know, increase the field of resources and providers. Is it getting better? You know, I'd like to think it is. You know, I think pre-COVID, um, having telehealth and having that, that wasn't really a thing. Yeah. And now we have that resource. So for rural areas like this, that can be really, really helpful for people. And for some folks that might be more comfortable, they might not want to sit face to face with somebody, but they could talk to somebody or be on a, um, a Zoom call with somebody. So I think there's progress in some of those ways, definitely. Always room for improvement, yep, though. All for right. sure. All right, well, we do have a list of resources available on our website. Um, you can just click right on the tab that's available there and there's so many different um, uh, resources listed there and of course if you or someone you know um, are having suicidal thoughts we uh, encourage you to call 988 and I just want to mention the uh, walk for hope event coming up September 21st you'll be there yep I will be there yeah, and what exactly is Walk for Hope? Um, we have our annual walk that really um, puts a light on um, those that have lost somebody to suicide, those that are struggling, and kind of the community that supports them. So we've done this now for many, many years, um, and we're really looking forward to doing it again. All right, so that will be happening Saturday, September, September 21st from 9 to 11, right at Alqual in Ishpeming. Correct. All right, well, I want to thank you so much for thank your time you for this morning me. and the work that you're doing. Thank you.